What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to another deck and battle here on PTCGO and this time we're finally featuring some new Shining Legends cards so definitely excited to try some of these out and just real quick, want to give a quick little apology content has been a little bit slow over the past week or so you know, I was traveling a lot, I had some stuff going on in my personal life and also I think the Burning of Shadows format just kind of had been a little bit stale so uh, wasn't really there wasn't really a whole lot I think that was exciting to talk about so, but anyways, we have Shining Legends out now, so we'll definitely have a steady stream of content coming. So for our first entry, though, we are going to be looking at Aloha Ninetales featuring the new Zorark GX, which is definitely one of the most hotly anticipated cards of the set. So Ninetales definitely has been an interesting deck for a little bit now. I think with Guardians Rising, uh, I'm sorry, with Burning Shadows, the deck certainly got a little bit of a boost that kind of propelled it into being a more legitimate deck. And now that we have Shining Legends, I think yet again, Ninetales gets another a little bit of a boost. So for you guys who aren't too familiar with this archetype, it kind of centers around the Alolan Ninetales GX. So let's take a look at this guy. You know, it has that Ice Blade attack to do 50 to one of your opponent's Pokemon just for a DCE. Just a nice little uh, snipe attack. Uh, it, but the main attack that's going to do the bulk of our damage is Blizzard Edge for two water and a colorless. Does 160 and you discard two energy from this Pokemon. So with a choice band, that means we're going to be hitting for 190, which is great. That's going to uh, one-shot pretty much every basic EX and GX that's really popular in the format at the time of filming. So that's good. If we have a Professor Kukui, that'll bump us up to 210, so we can knock out things like Espeon, uh, GX, and other Stage 1 GXs. Um, but yeah, anyway, so Blizzard Edge, like I said, our main attack. We do have to discard some energy, which isn't too bad since we do have things like Aqua Patch in the deck to get them back. Um, and then it's GX move, Ice Path GX, just for another DCE, just move all of your damage counters from this Pokemon to your opponent's active. So luckily Ninetales is a little bit tanky, it has 210 hit points, so that means a lot of things in the format won't really knock it out in one hit, especially things like Gardevoir GX, I think will struggle a little bit since Ninetales does discard its own energy, so, uh, you know... Only a few things I think really easily one-shot you, so a lot of the times you can just use Ice Path and heal off all the damage done to you. So it's going to be kind of the main attacker the deck is centering around. We do, however, run one of the other Alolan Ninetales for that Luminous Barrier ability, prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon, by your opponent's GX and EX. So that's really good since the current metagame is extremely dominated by EXs and GXs. Uh, this guy also gives you a little bit of an out to, you know, maybe some of your bad matchups like Metagross, uh, you know, forcing your opponent to use kind of like bad attackers like Beldums and Matangs to do damage to you. Um, so just an all-around solid card, and like I said, helps you out with some matchups that sometimes can be a little bit tricky as well. We're playing two Tapu Koko, and that's going to be for this Flying Flip attack. So it does 20 to each of your opponent's Pokemon just for a DCE, and that might seem kind of insignificant, but, uh, you know, it, this attack really helps out with the math in terms of taking one-hit knockouts with Ninetales' Blizzard Edge. So, just for example, if you get off two Flying Flips against something like a Gardevoir uh, GX deck, uh, that will, you know, take Gardevoir's hit points all the way down to 190, which means a Blizzard Edge uh, with a choice ban will knock it out in one hit so definitely uh, very important to note or if you just get off one flying flip that means a choice banded uh, nine tails with a kukui can knock it out in one hit so flying flip is just very very good uh, against a lot of different decks uh, in order to soften things up for you to take one hit knockouts also in the case of metagross uh, tapu coco in combination with Espeon EX and the baby alone nine tails kind of gives you an alternate win condition you can flying flip your you know, opponent's Metagrosses or Beldums, forcing them to evolve before they get knocked out. And then once they evolve all, all the way up to Metagross, you can kind of wall your opponent with the baby Alolan Ninetales. So you can do cool strategies like that in order to you know, force your opponent to attack you with GXs to kind of a, you know, a, take advantage of with your baby Alolan Ninetales. Also, Tapu Koko has free retreat, which is very, very important, uh, since if we have a Guzma, this will allow us to promote a Tapu Koko and then retreat into something different if we choose to as well. So definitely a very, very good card. Uh, so like I said, we are playing one Espeon EX as well for that Miraculous Shine attack. Devolve each of your opponent's evolved Pokemon, put the highest stage back into your opponent's hand. 
So this does give you an alternate win condition if you you know struggle to take one hit knockouts, uh, you know with your with your Alola Nine Tails GX, you can de-evolve a lot of stuff with uh, Miraculous Shine, especially once you've used something like Tapu Koko to spread a lot of damage. So, like I said, just a, a very nice card helps us uh, have an alternate way that we can win and take knockouts. And then the new and I think most exciting new component to this deck is going to be a 2-2 Zorak GX line. So previously, Nine Tails played Octillery. Uh, just for some nice little extra draw power, but I think Zorak GX is a little bit superior to Octillery going forward, so let's take a look at why. So it's a 210 hit point uh, stage 1 GX, very similar to Ninetales, uh, and it has this nice ability called Trade. Once during your turn before you attack, you may discard a card from your hand if you do draw two cards. So this is great because we can actually put water energy into the discard pile to get out with Aqua Patch. You know, in the late game, if we get end into, you know, like one or two cards, uh, trade allows us to actually draw out of that, kind of similar to Octillery in that way. But Zork is actually kind of a decent back attacker too. So it has this attack called Riotous Beating. For just a DCE, it does 20 for each of your Pokemon in play. So this is nice because if we have a full bench, uh, we're doing 120. 150 if we have a choice ban. So this is good because it gives us some additional type coverage. You know, if we are going against something like a Metagross or something that can really make easy work of our Ninetales, we can kind of switch to Zorak GX and kind of go aggro with uh, Zorak instead. Uh, another matchup that I'm really happy about this improving is Greninja. Even though Greninja is not the most common deck uh, that we've seen. It still does pop up at tournaments. It even, you know, got all the way to second place at the recent Connecticut Regionals. So definitely still a solid deck that you could expect to see. And Ninetales previously, if you did not play the Giratina promo, definitely struggled against Greninja. It's just not a great matchup because they're a one prize attacker. You have to discard your energy every time you want to take a knockout. Just not a great matchup. And Zorak really allows you to handle that matchup without being as reliant on your Ninetales. So just I think Zorak is just a great inclusion to this deck uh, just for these different reasons I've mentioned. And just around the Pokemon line, two Tapu Lele GX of course for that Wonder Tag ability and also we can make use of Energy Drive as well if we choose to. So going on to the rest of the deck, a lot of this will look pretty standard. We're playing four Sycamore, three N. Those are going to be our main sources of draw power. Three Guzma, of course, one Bridget. But then the more interesting supporters we're playing is going to be two copies of Professor Kukui. So draw two cards, and during this turn, your attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. And like I said, this is very, very important for taking certain knockouts in the game. Like I said, stuff like Gardevoir GX. If you've used Tapu Koko with a Choice Band, and a Professor Kukui, you can knock it out in one hit. Or also, you know, similarly, if you don't have a choice ban, Kukui, Kukui can help you take one hit knockouts against other things, maybe like Tapu Bulu GX or Volcanians, or, well, I mean, I guess you knock out Volcanian either way. But, you know, other stuff that has 180 hit points. So it just really helps with the math in terms of taking knockouts. And the last supporter we are playing is going to be one copy of Mallow. So search your deck for two cards, shuffle your deck, and put those uh, cards on top of your deck in any order. So the reason we are choosing to play a copy of this is because we put Zorak GX in the deck. Uh, so now we can Mallow, maybe get a DCE and a Choice Band, or you know whatever we want put on top of our deck, then use that ability on Zorak GX to discard a card from our hand and draw those two cards with Mallow. So that's kind of the combo we're going for here. Um, you know, I don't know how I feel about Mallow yet. Out of the games I played with this deck, it's it's hit or miss. Uh, you don't use it a lot of the times, but every once in a while it can really come in clutch. So might have to experiment with this. Maybe it's not worth it. Maybe it needs a heavier count in the deck. I'm not sure, guys, but feel free to play around with this list and make any changes that you see fit. And the rest of the deck really hasn't changed much from previous incarnations. For Ultra Ball, for Aqua Patch, uh, we are playing two Field Blowers just to discard our opponent's tool cards. Uh, especially now that you know we are playing Zorak GX, we really want to make use of that ability as much as possible. So if our opponent has a Garbotox and Garboder, we can get rid of its its tool to get our abilities back. Also, I think more importantly, this is get rid of Choice Bands because we want to make sure our opponents cannot knock out our Ninetales in one hit 
forcing them to play into an Ice Path GX at some point. Uh, two Rescue Stretcher, you get a Pokemon from your discard pile back into your hand, or three back into your deck. So just a nice little form of recovery. And for the tools, three uh, Choice Band, just to do a little bit more damage, like I've mentioned a few times in this video. And two Float Stone, just to give our Pokemon free retreat if need be. And then for the energy cards, we are playing 8 Water and 4 DCE. Again, pretty standard, not too much has changed there. But guys, that is the list we are going to be trying out. Definitely excited to have a new partner for Alola Ninetales. Uh, but let's switch over to the battle portion of the video and we'll show you how this deck looks in action. Alright guys, we have ourselves a game here. And our opponent has a, a water deck box. So maybe we're playing against something similar. Maybe an Alola Ninetales mirror. That would be interesting. Uh, but here it's called a coin flip and see. Uh, so we do lose the coin flip, which is never fun but luckily even though we're probably going to be going second uh you know we do have some decent first turn attackers so if we start with a tapu coco or even a low and vulpix like we have here we'll probably be in decent shape but unfortunately our hand is complete trash <laughs> this is pretty unworkable so we are really going to need to hit something off of our uh card for turn but luckily our opponent also is going to mulligan a little bit so that is going to give us another out to drawing a card to kind of stabilize so yes we will definitely draw those cards and we do hit an N which is great so our opponent has a Pukumuku and a Slowbro so I really don't know what to make uh, about this here um, you know, I could attach the Floatstone, play in, that way if we get a Tapu Koko, we can maybe attack with that, potentially. Uh, you know, maybe in hindsight, uh, maybe we should have just attached a Vulpix, since I guess uh, a Tapu Koko might not be a good attacker here anyway, since then we have two Pokemon on the field and Tapu Koko would take damage. So, yeah, maybe I think just going the more aggressive Ninetales route will be uh, better for us. So here, I mean, I have an Aqua Patch, I have a DCE. I'm really afraid to attach a DCE to just an Alolan Vulpix just because it's so easily knocked out. So I think I'm just going to Aqua Patch to it and just use Beacon here. And we can grab ourselves a couple different things. Going to go for the two Alolan Ninetales. I think a safer play would actually be probably a Zerua and one Alolan Ninetales uh, just because this Vulpix could get knocked out. But, you know, it's feeling a little bit risky here. Um, I wouldn't mind getting the two Ninetales in play because what I'd like to do is just attach a DCE to probably the active uh, to start sniping stuff while I power up a different one on the bench. Here opponent has a Glaceon EX which you know normally would be a problem for evolution decks but we play Tapu Lele GX to deal with Glaceon so um, I'm really not too worried about that card. Here they actually do knock out our uh, Alolan Vulpix with Pukumuku. Uh, so yeah, definitely a little bit of a risky play. Didn't really pay off for me there. Um, so I probably just should have been a little bit more conservative. But here where I can actually do this turn, I can play Tapu Lele. We could grab an end. We actually haven't played Bridget yet. So we can play Bridget and start setting up the rest of our board. So I'll play Bridget. Now we can grab a Zerua. Well, and Vulpix and probably a Tapu Koko. Even though, like I said, uh, you know, I'm not too sure about going the Tapu Koko route. It's nice just to have a Pokemon with free retreat in play. But here I'm gonna do Ice Blade, softening up that Tapu Lele, or I'm sorry, that uh, Glaceon EX on the bench uh, for us to start hitting it with Tapu Lele in a little bit. Uh, if you guys aren't too familiar, uh, Glaceon does have this Crystal Ray attack, which I'm sure he's gonna be hitting us with here. Uh, it does 70 damage, 80 with that Fighting Fury Belt, and then it can't take damage from Evolution Pokemon on uh, on my next turn. So definitely is going to make things a little bit annoying, but luckily I actually can get around that fairly, fairly easily. We have Ice Path GX, which Crystal Ray does not block against. Uh, we have Ice Blade to snipe other things, so you know I think we're going to be in a fine spot. Your opponent is going to do a damage to us, and okay, so we have some options. Um, top decking the Guzma does make things interesting. Could actually just Guzma up this Pukamuku on the bench and use Ice Path to take a knockout, but 
Here I'm just going to Sycamore. I'd rather, if I'm going to do something like that, I'd rather just the Ice Path uh, to the Active. And so I have a couple options here. Uh, we have a DCE, so that means we can actually attach to... Hmm. Could attach to Tapulay with a DCE. Another option we have is to attach a Water Energy to the Active, but then if this Slowbro uh, EX gets a Choice Band, they would actually knock us out. So I really don't think I can afford to use Blizzard Edge this turn. Oh yeah, we can't even attack the Glaceon with it anyways. My bad, guys. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm just going to retreat. Uh, discarding this water energy and then just using energy drive here so that's going to force our opponent to have a uh, guzma or something like that in order to knock out this nine tails i rather you know maybe i'm getting a little bit greedy but i like to kind of ice path when i'm taking a knockout i don't know if that's the right move to do here or not but uh, uh just kind of making it a little harder for our opponent to take a knockout so here we're gonna see a brooklet hill And we're going to see a man if he hit the bench. I am fine with that because that means we will have an easy two prize uh, Pokemon to knock out at some point. So here our opponent is going to just, uh, you know, power up this Slowbro EX. And this is what I was talking about. If they had gotten the Slowbro EX with the Choice Band, they would have knocked out uh, Ninetales. So a good thing we uh, retreated that if we weren't going to use Ice Path, of course. So here I have a couple options. Could play Lele for a Guzma. Um, well, actually, one thing we can do is we have DCE. Okay, yeah. Here's what I think I'm gonna do. I think we're gonna grab Mallow because what that will allow us to do here is, if we get a Field Blower, we can actually knock out this Glaceon with a Tapu Coco spread. So I think that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna use Ultra Ball, getting rid of an Ultra Ball and a Water Energy grabbing that awesome new Zork GX. So we can put that guy in play. Then we can use Mallow, putting the Field Blower on top of our deck and another card, probably a supporter for next turn. Uh, that seems okay to me, maybe. Um, or maybe an Aqua Patch. I think maybe a supporter might be the better way to go. So here, I'm just gonna grab a uh, Sycamore. That seems okay to me. So now what we can do is we can use Trade to discard a Water Energy and draw two cards. So this is awesome. We have the Field Blower. We can get rid of, let's see, the Choice Ban and the Fighting Fury Belt seems best to me. That way that Slowbro can't knock out our Ninetales on the bench. And here we're going to do Flying Flip, 20 to each of our opponent's Pokemon, knocking out that Glaceon EX, getting us two prizes. So I think we're actually in decent shape. And I'm guessing at this point, our opponent is pulling like a water toolbox deck. You know, we're seeing a lot of different water attackers. They have the Manaphy. So that's what I'm assuming this deck is. You know, at first I was kind of scared. I thought we were going to see like a Pukamuku, like bursting balloon type of deck. Luckily, that is not the case. Here, our opponent has their own Alolan Vulpix. So one thing that kind of worries me about that is potentially... Uh, if they get a baby Aloha Ninetales with that Luminous Barrier ability, that actually could be pretty problematic for us. So that's something uh, we will have to keep in mind here. Okay, and I actually kind of like this hand. Um, well, no, never mind. This Coco is going to get knocked out. It's kind of bad. Um, uh, yeah, we should, still should be able to make the, this hand work, though. Even though our Coco is going to be able to get knocked out, uh, we still have plenty of other attackers left to mess with. Okay, so our opponent is going to knock out Coco. Who do we promote here? Oh, wait, no, he only does 100. I forgot. Okay, so yeah, we're in a good spot. So a couple things we can do here. Um, we could... Let's see what I'll have used first. So one thing that actually might be a good play here is to just do another Flying Flip. That could soften up this Manaphy. But at the same time, I don't know, that might be too defensive. I think we actually could afford just to be aggressive and take knockouts. So, hmm. So this is kind of awkward. I really want to Guzma up this Manaphy and take a knockout on it with... Uh, an ice path, but the Manaphy does not have enough 
enough damage on it just yet, so... Just trying to think, because I really want an Ice Path. I really don't want to leave this Ninetales just sitting on the board, uh, you know, softened up. Uh, you know, another play we could do, we could actually just power up Ninetales and do Blizzard Edge to take a knockout. That's also an option. So, yeah, I think that's probably the play. But if our opponent had a way to respond, I don't know. Uh, if they have a choice band of Galician EX, that actually would be a problem for us, I think. So I think here I'm just going to bring up this Vulpix and use Ice Path, or Ice Path, just in case they do have that baby level nine tails. I really didn't want to take just one prize, but was just really afraid our opponent would have had uh, something like, like a like a choice banded Glaceon EX to do second bite on us. That would have been kind of bad. So let's see what our opponent is going to do here. And who knows, maybe I'm just playing a little too defensively, but uh, yeah, like I said, just a little afraid of a choice ban. Last time I was afraid of choice ban, our opponent did have an out to it, so uh, <laughs> just trying to keep our uh, Pokemon uh, alive right now. So here, our opponent's going to end us into a different hand. Not too big of a deal since we do have that handy Zorak GX to allow us to draw out of it. But anyways, we do hit a Sycamore, so not even too big of a deal here. So your opponent is going to use Final Splash for 100 damage. I'm pretty much okay with that. And what we can actually do here is... Well, what do we want to do here? We could Rescue Stretcher. Shuffle some Pokemon back into our deck. I guess that's fine. Actually, eh, I don't know. I think that might have been a misplay. We don't really need the Coco or the Vulpix anymore at this point in the game, so... I think maybe I should just use Trade or just Sycamore those away. Uh, here I'm just going to use this Field Blower. And we could use Trade before Sycamoring, but I don't want to draw into something that we don't want to Sycamore. So I think I'd rather just Sycamore and then Trade afterwards. And do we attach the energy? Yeah, I think we do. We're going to go for the Blizzard Edge. Okay, so here we have an Aqua Patch. That's pretty good. And so one thing we can do as well, well first I'm going to do trade, getting rid of this Espeon, thin our deck out in case we get hit with an N or something like that. So we're going to Aqua Patch onto this Nine Tails, and kind of what I want to do here is take a knockout with Blizzard Edge, and then kind of bait our opponent into just attacking with Second Bite with Glaceon to knock out our Nine Tails, and then from there we can actually respond with our Bench to Lowen Nine Tails to do Blizzard Edge to finish taking a knockout. So they are prone in Glaceon, so that tells me they're probably gonna do second bite, which again, I am fine with, because that means they will not be immune from evolution Pokemon on the next turn, which is what I'm really after here. Okay, and they're gonna do second bite, knock out Alolan Ninetales, so yeah, that means we have the game, then we can just promote this Alolan Ninetales, and we have the choice band in hand, and the energy in order to finish taking a knockout here. So do that, then we can just do Blizzard Edge, taking a knockout uh, on this Glaceon for the last knockout of the game. So uh, definitely glad our opponent kind of played into our strategy there at the very end. But yeah, that's gonna be the game we're trying out. I hope you guys enjoyed this look at Alola Nine Tails with Zorak. You can definitely see how Zorak is nice in the late game, especially where you can, you know, discard extra cards out of your deck that you won't need anymore. That way you don't have to draw into them. Uh, you know, allows you just some extra draw power, put water energies in the discard. So definitely proving to be a pretty solid partner for this Aloha Ninetales deck. But definitely stay tuned, we're gonna have plenty of other Shining Legends decks being covered here in the coming days and weeks. So uh, definitely uh, be sure to check those out when they go up. And also if there's any cards in particular you guys uh, wanna see us try out here on the channel, let us know below in the comments too. But as usual guys, feel free to like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out our merchandise over at rarecandytcg.com if you can pick up something to help support the channel and mean a lot to us. Also a huge shout out to our patrons over on patreon.com. If you can support us over on our Patreon slash rarecandytcg, that would also be greatly appreciated. But with that, I appreciate you watching and we'll see you for the next one.